In this part, we'll be talking about the male reproductive system in cockroaches. In cockroaches, the sexes are separate. That means one cockroach would have only male uh, reproductive parts and the other would have only female. That means they show sexual dimorphism. Now the main reproductive structure is a pair of testes and these testes are located in fourth and fifth abdominal segments. These testes are lobed structure that means there are three lobes and they are buried in fat. So when we draw the diagram we will just make the abdominal segments. Say so this is one lobe, second and third lobe. So these are three lobed testes in the fourth and fifth abdominal segments. And they are buried in the fatty tissue. So all around them is fat which is present. So here this is all the fat which is there and the lobed testes. So this is one testes. Arising from each testis is a narrow tube like structure which goes up to the last abdominal segment and these are known as the vast difference and then these tubes they ascend. So from here also there would be a tube like structure coming and these tubes would ascend. That means they would go up to almost up to the fifth or sixth segment and now they will join to form one duct. So this is the vast difference coming from this testis and here it is coming from the other testis. So let us label this as the vasa differentia and both of them join to form an ejaculatory duct. So two vast difference from both the testes, they come, they descend, go up to the lower abdominal segments and then ascend almost up to the fifth or the sixth segment and they join to form an ejaculatory duct. Just where this junction is, that is the vast two vast difference joining to form the ejaculatory duct, we find that there is a large gland. And this gland is made up of three different types of tubules. There are some peripheral tubules which are very long tubules. So long peripheral tubules and in the center are present the smaller tubules. And this gland is going to cover this junction. So we don't see the junction, but because we drew the junction first, now we know what is happening. There are two vast difference. They are joining to form an ejaculatory duct. And just where it joins, we have a large gland. This gland also has one part. So we have seen the peripheral tubular parts and the central part. Now around the central, on the posterior side, we will not be able to see it from here. But on the posterior side, there are some more tubular structures. And this makes the seminal vesicle. So there are three parts. This would be the seminal vesicle. These are the long tubular part. And the central is the short tubular part. And this, these three things together make this mushroom gland. And their secretions are also going to play a very important role. In seminal vesicle, the sperms are stored. So here, sperms get stored till they are released during copulation. Now this ejaculatory duct it descends and 
it opens through an opening which is called the male gonopore. This male gonopore is near the anal opening. So this is the male gonopore which is there and it opens into a small sac like structure. There is one more gland which is present and that gland is present behind it. If I draw a transverse section, say this is the ejaculatory duct, so we would find one more gland which is behind it and its duct would open just underneath it. So we would find one more gland here which is a large gland and this gland is known as phallic gland. The secretion of phallic gland would be released by the tube and the tube is going to run very close to the ejaculatory duct and opens here. So let me change this arrow a little bit. This is the male gonopore and this is the duct of the phallic gland. Now what happens and how the sperms are produced. The sperms are produced in the testis. From the testis through vasa differentia, they come into the central part and they get temporarily stored in some minor vesicle. Now at the time of copulation, what happens is the sperms are released. So if these are the sperms, so this would have sperms and secretion of seminal vesicle. Around this, there is secretion, milky secretion of the longer tubules. So this makes a layer around it. But these, this layer is not hard, it is very soft layer. And outside this, there would be secretion from the smaller tubules. And this smaller tubular secretion would also be laid around it. That means this is the outer layer and this is the secretion from the small tubules. The inner one, the red one is the first layer or the inner layer secretion of the long tubules. And now this structure is deposited in the female's body. So from the male, the sperms are collected in the form of a cluster surrounded in two layered structure. And now this entire structure will be deposited. And as you can see, there is an opening so that this, the sperms can come out from here. Now once this structure is deposited in the female's body, at that time there would be secretion from the phallic gland. And the secretion of phallic gland, it hardens. So as soon as it hardens, the entire structure becomes a hard structure. So this is the layer secreted by phallic gland. And now this would be deposited into the female's body. So male reproductive system, the sex organs, that is main sex organs are the testis located in fourth, fifth abdominal segments, a paired tubes, vasa differentia, open into a common duct which is ejaculatory duct. So there are two glands, one is a large mushroom shaped gland and Another longish gland which is called the phallic gland. So the secretion of these glands basically keep all the sperms together so that when the egg is released at that time these sperms would be released from the structure. So this is the male reproductive system. Now after this we'll take a female reproductive system and then we'll try to understand how this structure helps when the sperms come out and they fertilize the eggs. So in the next part, we'll take up female reproduction.